Okay, hey guys, it's me, Janet Kelly. So, the other day I put on my story that, um, let me show this air off because it's not hot anymore. Hopefully this is bright, I'm gonna edit it later. Um, the other day I posted on my story that I wanted girls to give me, like, ideas for YouTube videos because, you know, um, I wanna have, like, advice for dancers as a dancer myself. And I feel like a lot of YouTuber, you, stripper YouTubers um, do not always disclose the good, the bad, the ugly dancing. Like you saw my story the other day when the guy um, walked away from my station that really pissed me off. Um, so yeah, today I'm going to talk about the cons. I'm in the car driving home right now and I feel like this is the best time to record little advice things like this because by the time I get home, I take the makeup off, I shower, and I'm like the last thing I want to do is sit here and record even though it doesn't take that much energy out, but it's like, might as well get this out of the way, right? Before I forget. So this video is gonna be about the cons of um, dancing. And then I'm also gonna make a video, probably tomorrow in the car as well, about makeup. Cause one person was like, a coworker of mine actually, she said that my makeup is always like really good and I sweat a lot. She's like, how do you make it stay? So I'm gonna do that probably when I get home because I want to show you the products I use. All right, so the cons of dancing. There are many cons, I don't want that to scare people away. Um, so with COVID going on, um, or really when COVID started, there was a surplus of, hold on, this part of the road is really bumpy. There was a surplus of baby strippers. I'm gonna yell because the road is really bumpy. There was a surplus of baby strippers and I feel like a lot of them look at famous people like Cardi B and other poppin' strippers who maybe are like popping on Instagram or YouTube or Twitter and they're like, yep, that's gonna be me. I'm gonna, you know, when I turn 18 or whenever I get to the club, like if you're over 18 or over 21 and you're just like, I'm gonna be a stripper. I'm gonna make money just like them. Now here's the thing, right? Um, you have to understand one, Take a good look at yourself in the mirror and remind yourself that you are a beautiful human being, okay? Because when you start dancing, you're going to face criticism left and right, okay? And the people that come to strip clubs, they do not give a fuck what comes out of their mouths, okay? They are ruthless people, and the thing is, a lot of them have been to the clubs way more than you have, you know, if you're starting, of course they have. So they're used to getting away with certain language, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not trying to say it's right, but it happens, unfortunately. People will sit there and pick on your insecurities. So if, you know, if you're a little on the plus side, they'll pick at that, you know, if they don't like your skin tone, they'll pick at that. If they don't like your hair, your sock, your, 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 your height, all that stuff, they'll pick on that. So I really encourage you to take a good look in the mirror you about this shit anywhere and tell yourself they're beautiful because people will tear you down without giving a fuck okay people can be handsy um they'll look at it like oh well if i'm giving you money whether it's two dollars or two hundred dollars i should be able to touch whatever i want they will cross your boundaries so make sure when you're looking at yourself in the mirror and telling yourself that you're beautiful you also tell yourself what boundaries you have and boundaries you would never cross not even for a million dollars, okay? Because sometimes it gets to the point where you're like, oh, well, you know, if they're handing me this amount of money, I'll let them da 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 And if you have boundaries that you swear to yourself you do not want to have them crossed, do not, do not fold. Because I promise you, once those boundaries are crossed, it will really, it will really fuck up your mental health. You know what I mean? Like, if you don't have mental health issues before you start dancing, you'll get some if you, let these people cross your boundaries, okay? Um, and speaking of boundaries, you know, and tying into like the amount of money you would take to let them be crossed, um, set a goal for yourself every night because you cannot go into dancing thinking you're gonna make racks every night. That's what I thought at first. I didn't have any strippers to guide me. Like I had an Instagram and I have your access to YouTube and all those social sites but I never thought hey let me look it up because I'm big on doing research before I do anything and I did a little bit of research before I started dancing like I looked up clubs in my area um, 
what to do before you audition, but the best people to get advice from are other dancers. You know what I mean? Dancers who are willing to give you information. Some dancers will ask for a fee. Some dancers will give you pointers for free. Um, and it all depends on what you're trying to look for. I know some dancers sell like, um, they sell like uh, baby stripper university um, workbooks and stuff like that, or textbooks, if you if you will, ebooks. Um, and a lot of times, I mean, not that I bought a lot of them. I bought one from the scammer girl. Not that she was a scam, but like this girl um, pretended to be somebody else and was selling another girl's ebooks, which I thought was really messed up. But um, yeah, a lot of those books, honestly, to me, they either all say they either all say the same thing, or they'll say things that are like. Um, I feel like only work for that dancer. You know what I mean? Um, like things that might work, and I know people don't want to bring race and everything, but um, race in the strip club is a big thing. It's not like a regular job where, um, let's say you guys are all cashiers and there's white cashiers, black cashiers, Asian, Hispanic, um, Polynesian. Like the thing is there's, um, there's literally, um, the race definitely plays a part in the strip club. It's not like, oh, well, they're gonna have a dance with me just because I'm beautiful. People can be racist, people can be colorist, people can have preferences, which I'm gonna talk about preferences in a different video because you don't wanna hear that conversation. If you're ready for it, you're ready for it. If you're not, you're not. But um, yeah, like I've been denied dances and stuff like that just because I'm a black woman. I had it said to my face, I had it not said to my face, but sometimes you just know. You know what I mean? So a lot of these stripper ebooks, I would say take them with a grain of salt, understand that. These tips might work for that dancer, but they're not gonna work. They might not work for everybody. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like a couple of tips that work for everybody is like, um, you know, when you're rejected, don't don't flip out about it. Just, you know, um, go on to the next person. That's a con too. You're going to be rejected. Fuck the whole bringing race and, and color and all these different uh, characteristics into it. Some people just go to the strip club just to watch. They don't want to do dances, they just want to get a beer, and they might tip, but some people are just so hard to get money out of. Um, and yeah, it sucks, it's like we're not getting paid, unless you are an employee at a strip club, that's a topic for another video. But um, yeah, most of the time we're not getting paid to do this, we have to pay to work. The highest house fee I've ever paid was like, I think like $25. I never pay anything more than that. Um, now, if I'm going to go to a club in Oregon, if the house fee is whatever, I'll pay it. But it's also like the higher the house fee is, the harder you have to hustle. Because the thing is, sometimes you will leave with less than you uh, came in with. Like, let's say your house fee is $60 and you pay $60, but then you also tip out everybody. And some places are mandatory tip. That's I wouldn't say that's like a con, but just know that like I paid, I pay like at my club, I pay $20 to work, right? Um, I also, I give the DJ $20. Unless it's a bad night, I'll give him like $10, but for the most part, he takes care of me, he, you know, plays what I want him to play. Um, he always does like all these cool like light and smoke effects on stage. Um, sometimes he might put me on stage like more, you know what I mean? So it's like, you gotta look out for people and they'll look out for you. Now with security, security for the most part, I'm talking in general about clubs, not my club. For security for the most part, they do their job. But some clubs, I feel like, like my club right now, it's the best security ever. They walk me to my car. You know, I've been I've been to clubs where they don't even walk you to your car. Or they'll just kind of like walk you to the front door. But it's like, I could do that on my own. Like when I get out there, that's where it's like I need extra protection. So sometimes security is not good. That's the one con I would say. Um, if you want to like scope out clubs before you go, I recommend that too. And try to see, like try to talk to the girls and be like, listen, like, woman a woman you know, if you want to act like you're a dancer whatever you say a dancer a dancer but whatever just be like listen how is the security here because i'm thinking about working here and um i want to know how the security is how management is how the other girls are really the other girls shouldn't be a big factor but they can definitely um affect you you know what i mean um but just i would just recommend like not to spend a lot of time in the dressing room because those girls are not paying you okay but um yeah, so, and when you do, if you do go out and scope clubs and you ask other dancers, like, you know, um, house security and stuff like that, make sure, I would ask, like, bring some money with you to a strip club if you're going to go as a customer and scope it out, bring some money with you, and if you're going to ask the girls questions, like, 
tip them as you ask them questions because they're not there for free and I feel like not that I feel like it's definitely rude to ask them for advice and stuff like that without tipping them because they're at work you know what I mean even if you sign to a girl's DMs offer to pay her for me you can ask me any questions I don't really ask for payment um I thought about it like maybe doing like some kind of like you know Skype courses and give them all the information they want but this is something that's like a passion of mine like I love helping people so I wouldn't want to ask for payment because I feel like it kind of like you know I feel like it's not really genuine if I ask for payment even though I will give you the same information if you were offering to pay me um but uh yeah so definitely like scope out the club before you go there ask them how it is and see if you like it like see if you feel comfortable in that environment if you feel like you wouldn't want to be in there as a customer you know if you see like how the guys are treating the girls you're like mm, I don't know if I can deal with this then don't go there you know listen to your gut instinct okay but also ask another dancer how it is because you just seeing one night is not going to give you the gist of the, it's, it's going to give you like it in a nutshell but it's not going to be it in its entirety um what else is going to be a problem some nights are going to make shit money okay I know you might watch some dancers and they show you like, oh, like tonight I made like $600. That's a slow night, but you know, I'll make more later. Like honestly, some nights, like I said, you're gonna leave more than you came in. You'll leave with less than what your goal is, but you have to hustle. Some nights though, you're gonna hustle your ass off and you're still not gonna make enough money. So just make sure that, um, make sure that you, like when you set your goal, understand that, you know, sometimes you're not going to make that you know what i mean um what else what else what else i think that's all the cons i can think of oh, i just thought of some more stuff for the um cons of dancing so some clubs are going to i mean you can look at this as a con or a pro it depends on how you think but i'm just going to mention it um some clubs are going to require that you make a weekly schedule and some clubs are going to require that you make a monthly schedule other clubs are going to be like, just come in as you please. I worked at all those different types of clubs. Um, the club I was at for like four years, I have to make a schedule by the week. So like let's say Friday night or Saturday night, whichever night I was in there, I have to make a schedule for the next weekend. I would say like the shift I want to work. Um, speaking of that, I was hired as a nighttime girl. So I could only work night shift. If I wanted to work a day shift, I would have to talk to the daytime manager. Um, but at that club, I didn't really think that daytime shifts was really worth anything, so I didn't work day shift. Unless I really needed the money, then I would come in like at 5 or 7 o'clock instead of like 9, and then make some extra money that way. But um, yeah, sometimes there's two different managers, so you gotta make sure you know who runs what shifts. Um, so yeah, it's for like the weekly schedule. Also, um, and then for like the monthly schedule, there's gonna be some requirements. So at the club I work now, you have to work one Sunday and one Tuesday the whole entire month. So if you have like another job, whether it's dancing or this island is really messed up, whether it's dancing or like um, another job, and make sure you can like manage both of them if you want to do both of them, or if you just want to like drop one, um, make sure you can manage it. Um, I would recommend that you give yourself like a week off every month or just a couple days because it is stressful on the body, on the mind, like. So you want to give yourself some time to just like breathe like you know you had a good week you had a good couple of days like give yourself time to breathe so yeah um that's one thing it definitely like messes with your mental health sometimes because sometimes you're like damn am i not good enough am i not pretty like i'm doing my thing on the stage i'm not getting tipped like sometimes just the clientele but what i've done the past couple of weeks that has really made me feel stronger mentally um, is I just dance for myself, whether it's one guy at the tip rail or the whole tip rail is covered, like the area where the guy sits to actually watch you and tip you, whether the whole tip rail is covered in guys or it's just one guy there, like I dance for myself. You know what I mean? Like I'll make eye contact and smile and stuff like that, but I'm not going to focus so heavy on them like, oh, you should be tipping, you should be tipping. I just dance for myself. And when you enjoy yourself, it seems like I make more money. So one, you make more money, but two, it's also less stressful on your mind because you're not focused on like damn like these guys aren't tipping just enjoy yourself and the money think of the money as an added bonus of course you're gonna make money but don't be so stressed out about it because the stage is just 
one part of the game, you know, walking around, talking to guys, selling VIP, selling dances, that's the other part of it, right? So, um, yeah, make sure you enjoy yourself. Also, if you can't dance with the assistance of drugs and alcohol, then maybe this job isn't for you, okay? I've danced with girls where it's like, they can't go on stage until they get fucked up or just a little buzz. And if you can't dance without the assistance of those things, then it's not the job for you. And I'm not trying to be like, oh, you can't dance, but like, I'm looking out for you. So, um, yeah, that's that. Uh, if you ever need any help, any advice, you can direct message me on Instagram at might be Janet Kelly. Um, you can leave comments down below. I will make a part three for this if you want me to. But, um, yeah, I was in the car when I was getting out. I'm like, oh shit, like. Uh, schedule requirements and that's what I really had to talk about and also mental health. Um, I do have a video about depression and ADHD in the club. Um, I might redo that one. It was like kind of like last year like when COVID was first starting. Um, so I feel like it was like from a different perspective but I can make another one if you'd like to see that. Just let me know below. Let me know on Instagram, wherever, OnlyFans. You know what I mean? So yeah. Um, take care of yourself. Have a great night. Until next time. Bye.